So I joined the Air Force because I wanted a career. Um, I wanted something that is stable as far as what I can do in my life and pretty much give me something with like purpose. Not that I was like aimlessly going through life, but I was going out of college. Air Force was my, actually my goal to do. I was just lucky and blessed to get a job that I liked and everything, so. Okay. Um, I've been in the Air Force for eight years and currently I am a Staff Sergeant. Have you tested for tech yet? I have not. You haven't? So is this next year going to be your first year? So yes, uh, 2020 would be my uh, year for testing for tech. Okay. So my job is cyber transport and it is 3D 1X2. So I was fortunate enough to get this through DEP. Um, it was one of my top jobs that I wanted. And so my recruiter was like, hey, you got this job. So fortunate there. Do you know what number it was on your list? Um, I believe it was probably one or two. Okay. So, Super uh, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to go with six year. Uh, I just figured it would be just a better way of having a job. Like, so, you know, so I could put on a resume. I've been in six year versus four. So I just figured two more years wouldn't hurt me. But you've been in for eight years, so that means you re-enlisted. So I, I did extend, and then... You haven't re-enlisted yet? I have re-enlisted. Okay, okay. So I did another four. Okay. So you ended up liking it enough that you weren't looking to... Correct. Yeah, go get a civilian job, just yet at least. Just yet. Yeah. I miss my SRB though. That sucked. Oh, okay. <laughs> For those of you guys who don't know, that's a signing re-enlistment bonus. So they did they drop yours? So I was just I was just unfortunate because I or so, your time. Yeah. So oh, I was just man. not in that window. I already had my extension, and so I already did that. So I, at that point, I was already needed to re-enlist, and so they dropped a SRB like four months after I re-enlist, and so I was totally oh, out of it. So how much money would have you gotten if you re-enlisted? I, I I don't remember, but it was you probably, like I try not to think about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so going through college, I was studying information systems, business oriented, but so I was studying all the computer science stuff. And so this was actually something that was related to what I was learning in college. And yeah, so I was fortunate enough to get a computer job. So was really stoked about it again. So I was looking into, again, more computer related jobs. So all my things was computer related. Um, but the other jobs I was looking into, I believe was Intel. But me knowing what I know now, I would probably look into public affairs. So I love taking pictures and all that stuff too. And then protocol, I'm all, like, I'm a big Air Force blue guy. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind like knowing all the protocol stuff. And then maybe medical if I had to choose. Mm -hmm. And then since I had a short time being a unit deployment manager, that would probably be up there as well, so. Oh yeah, so my tech school was at Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi. So when I went to tech school, it was averaging around eight to 10 months. I stayed there for 11. Dang, that's a long tech school. <laughs> so we, yeah, we uh, other than weather, we have a long tech school as well. Uh, when I was in tech school at our time, we, there was a lot of airmen that was going through. So there was a lot of time between the schoolhouses. We have three schoolhouses to go through, like eight blocks each, almost averaging. You had to be, you had to be in AFI. Uh, was it? Air Force instructions or whatever between the schoolhouses, and so you're you're waiting your your school date. So you were kind of like held behind. So that's why we had a large uh, backup date. But I was also doing some research uh, with the airmen who do it now. And it looks like they have a three to five. So also the folks who are going into tech school now, there's like a process in which they can test out early out of blocks. So they have like a fast paced program. So it's kind of also dependent on the person how well they can study the material and test out or if they had like previous certifications or something like that yeah so they just like they already know the knowledge so they just kind of let them skip ahead yes That's and then cool. i'll also add with since we're doing an afsc video i want to add that our career is in talks to change it's afsc so combining career fields so right now again we're at three delta and so we might change to a one delta seven so um, that again, it will just be a cyber oriented job.
and then combining um, career fields. And that'll be in the future. Do they have a set date yet? Do you know of? All or? of this is rumored. So, okay. um, so just in the future, it could start to change. Correct. Yeah. So just cause if you were listening earlier, I, I'm a big Air Force person. Um, I'm pretty blue, so I love air, I love tech school. Um, I'm the type of person who was in the drill team, um, get involved. Even after tech school, I was in like um, honor guard and everything. So I'm pretty Air Forcey when it comes mm -hmm. to that. And so I kind of liked um, the military aspect of it. And you know, when it comes down to tech school, I, since we're there so long, I had like longer friendships with folks and that I still keep contact with today. And so that made it better and everything. And it was, again, it was kind of like going through college again. Um, so that was, it was also fun for me doing all of that. Yeah, I think it was just more the experience of being there with your friends for that many, that many months long. So it probably yeah. helped too, because it was like something you really wanted to do. Yeah. So you're interested in it. So the tech school was probably like informational, but also interesting to you at the same time. Yeah. Like it kept your attention pretty yeah. well. I mean, I mean, it's it's the part like the easiest part of your Air Force career like you you they tell you what to do you just do it and you yeah. study and it's you're not really stressing about anything and so yeah I'll also add at Keesler it felt like Hogwarts because there's you're you're going against four different squadrons and since we're a drill team drill team for us was like Quidditch so like we we compete against all the other four three other squadrons and then we had to drill down like every quarter so like it was an event to do like in Kiesler just to watch it like within the, the squadron so it was, it was entertaining in that aspect because you get as much as you have like Ravenclaw pride you have your own squadron pride and so it may be cheesy now but I, I, I still have fond memories of it so yeah that's awesome yeah that's, we definitely did not do anything like that or a text <laughs> so since we're a uh, comm job we can pretty much go everywhere so it's not limited to anything Really, we're a jack of all trades um, composition, and it kind of like you learn about like the OSI layers, and you learn about networking, the backbone of it, and everything. It's kind of difficult just because when you go to a different base, um, they pretty much teach you whatever they your your shop focuses on. So you might work on networks, you might work on computer systems as like administrative, um, you might work in the server room, which I did in my first base. And so in my first base, I was uh, running like Cat5 cables through the server room, through the different computers. We were tied in with a fiber optics um, group too. So really, again, we're like a mishmash of all our jobs. It could also be specialized. So I'm stationed at Creech. When I got to Creech, I was part of the RPA, so Ro Remote Piloted Aircraft Communications Maintenance. So we had to focus on the RPA computer systems. Can't go too much in detail with that, but it was very specialized to what we didn't learn in tech school. So you, you're here at Creech learning about a whole new comm system that you didn't learn anything about. And that could be the case with a lot of comm, like cyber transport. You may go to another base and not learn anything in your tech school. And you might even put, be put into a different AFSC, like possibly programming or comsec, so communica uh, communication security. And so you might just be put into a job that you're not really, you didn't really learn in tech school, but, or that was just one chapter in your book. And then now you have to learn the whole thing. So, so totally different changes in what you learn. Also at Creech, I was doing some satellite management. Again, not totally in my career field, but something that we had to do. And I am currently doing help desk. So um, more of the lower end, but still so fun. People have issues and they like submit a ticket. Yeah. So like doing print servers, uh, mapping printers, putting ma monitors together. So that's like the pretty basic end of like comm. Yeah. yeah. So that's not like the very intense, like in depth stuff. Yeah. That's like the most like surface level. Possibly. Yeah. So it's very help desk and it was kind of, it's interesting just because I've been in it eight years and it's only now that I am actually doing my calm job that's more related to what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting, it's cool, so yeah. So that would depend on what your shop does, what your squadron does. So let's say I was working in the Payrock at Creech, so the Persistent 
Attack Reconnaissance Operations Center. And so it's a mouthful <laughs> and, uh, acronyms, right? So at the Payrock, we're doing like satellite management and um, authorized service interruptions, notes and everything. And so I was more dealing with satellite management, right? And so when you're in that particular job was a 24 hour ops. We had, we went from working 12 hours, working to uh, traditional shifts. So day swings, mids. So depending on your manning and everything. So that was a 24 hour ops, right? And so you can be fit into that one. Or right now I'm in help desk at um, my new squadron and we're pretty much Monday through Friday, eight to four. Um, so super easy, super cake. Yeah, so one of, one of the best things for cyber transport is, and not to be biased, but what I think this is the best comm job is because we get to have a Cisco certification, Security Plus, um, through tech school. So it's one of our schoolhouses that we actually do, and it's a requirement for us. I, I believe the only other comm jobs that require Security Plus is cyber surety and cyber ops. And so, again, that's very marketable on the civilian world. And because it's mandatory for us, we have to keep renewing it um, when, when you expire. And I think it's around every four years or something. And so again, it's something great to have on the outside. Because you, we are calm and communications, it's, it's pretty much IT. So anything that we can translate that easily to the outside world is awesome. It also depends on where, where you're at, what base you're at, what your shop is about. So, me being, when I was in aircraft communication maintenance squadron doing um, RPA comm, it was very hard to translate that to the civilian world, but me doing a help desk or network administrator or whatever, that would probably be an easier translation to the civilian world. Any company that uses the internet Correct. <laughs> yeah. you could work for them. Very, yeah, so very commercial. Things that require a Cisco Security Plus will probably be your best option. So really you can apply to any job. Um, it just depends on your experience and what you can put on your resume. So there's not really a, a limit what jobs you can do. It's just more of your personal experience and uh, what you are capable of doing, so. So again, this depends on what squadron you're in, your shop. Uh, for my first base, we didn't have, we, we were closing, we were changing, we were reorganizing the unit, so we were non-deployable. At Creech, at ACMS, there was deployments available, and then at Payrock, there wasn't a lot of deployments available to us, and then at my new squadron, we have deployments on the regular. So again, it, it just depends on what squadron you're in and your job. It'll probably be like four to six months, more on the four, four month end. You're probably gonna look into probably deploying maybe once every other year. And again, it depends on your manning and everything. So I know my current squadron deploys a lot and it just, they, they're willing to work with their members and their, and their folks to see if, if, if that doesn't work with your schedule, they can probably throw in another um, sergeant to take your place. So my current squadron is willing to work it out. And so, yeah. yeah. I always address this as like a soft yes. I'm always going to see where I'm at in each enlistment, see where my life is at and if it aligns with the Air Force. And so far, like I was meant to be in the Air Force. And again, I've been very blessed and thankful for and very fortunate to have the mentorship and the basis that I've been at. So it just depends where I'm at in the next enlistment. But for the most part, I am looking for doing this for the full 20 years. So. So if you know this, you're getting this job ahead of time, so not through BMT or anything, I would suggest trying to do your best to study the materials. Like if you know, like so knowing now you have to do a Security Plus certification, start learning about the, the verbiage and the basic ideas and lessons about uh, Cisco and, and computers and all that so that you're, you're a little bit prepared going into tech school because I researching through other sites and you can look up in Facebook, there's a 3D 1X2 um, cyber transport 
Facebook group that you can follow. You can, even if you're just a new airman, you, you can just follow, you can join and ask questions. And so one thing that I asked in that group was like, hey, what, how can I prepare? And some people were saying like, again, like it was saying, like studying ahead of time, um, especially if you have no computer background behind you. So since I was studying it in college, I had a little bit edge. Um, I still had to learn and figure out the more further details and lessons, but um, at least I was had my foot, foot in the water. The best way you want to do is keep on having a resume for yourself, writing it and knowing what you can do to make yourself more marketable, right? And so you don't want to be in a position where maybe you're injured and now you have to be out of the Air Force or something. And so keeping a resume on what you do and, and your job field is always something great. Making yourself marketable. If you are serious about the comm field, and, and communications, you might want to learn to get other certifications. Um, the Air Force is great on academic tuition assistance, so you can go into colleges that offer uh, other certifications, CCNA, A+, and all that stuff. So definitely something that you want to look into if you want to make yourself even more marketable. Another advice I would give, and this is the more of a working trait. I don't expect everyone to do this. Um, it's more on your personality, but try to be very positive. I'm a very positive person. I like to see the more optimistic side of things. And so that just helps you be more resilient to be, you know, if days suck and there will be days that suck in the military, every military person knows this. So being a positive person will definitely help you out when those days do hit you. So constantly learning about your job, getting involved. Again, I'm pretty blue, so, but I get to, I'm involved in a lot of private organizations. Uh, like I said, I did a lot of honor guard stuff. I, I'm still doing honor guard stuff. And so getting involved, again, that's more a personality. If you're not that type of person to put yourself out there, that doesn't really work for you. But if you are that type of person who is a go-getter and wants to be out there, that's always good. And it kind of gives you a halo effect. So um, a halo effect is something like the your senior leadership don't really you're not in the spotlight in a bad way. So mm -hmm. if you're in the, if they have a positive image of you and a positive reputation, a reputation of you, you're less to be hassled. You're less to be, and they'll give you more slack. You know, like if you're late or something, and obviously you don't want to take advantage of it. But if you're late, like hey, Lozada is not like this. So he'll he'll we'll let him slide. And so by having a good reputation for yourself is always a good thing. I'm not saying you have to brown nose every NCO that you meet, but definitely be on the good side and it just helps you out. So knowing your job and being involved is definitely a great way to set yourself up for success. So yeah. You can follow me at my Instagram at Hey Mitch Mitch. Kyle can put the description uh, below or whatever. I also have my own YouTube. You can find it again at Hey Mitch Mitch. I also have a joint Instagram and YouTube with my friend from tech school. Um, we're both here in Vegas and it's called It's Mandatory Fun. So you can check that out. Mm -hmm.